Hey guys, it's Rachel and Josh, and we are here today. We're talking about some of the buzzwords of homesteading, hobby farming, and micro farming. Um, we're kind of explaining what we do and what we've really kind of looked more into since the whole COVID crisis. This is something that we've had the land, we've known we wanted to do more with it, and then we've had that extra time to really start exploring different ways to, to make that work. So we're here to share our goals and what we've learned along the way. So the first thing we started with was ranching. Um, we have Ibex. We call them goats a lot because they look like goats, but they're actually not. Um, we've had them for a couple of years, but we've really leaned into it. Um, they've always been a hobby. So recently we've started making the transition to making it more of a revenue source. So we are trying to breed the genetics and make them better so that we can sell them for various purposes. Um, so that's kind of the difference between having a hobby farm and having a micro farm or having a homestead there's there's different purposes for the different things so when you hear the word homestead what that is is actually people trying to be self-sufficient um, you can be self-sufficient in different ways depending on your property some people grow a garden for instance and try to raise the majority of their produce or supplement their produce with the things that they grow themselves uh, some people raise goats or cows and they make um, cheese and stuff out of the milk and they drink the milk and they they might even sell or barter with those things a lot of people raise chickens so that's kind of in the homesteading world um, where you have things on your property that you do in order to be self-sufficient and that's a hard thing to do in today's world so a lot of people are just supplementing what they already have or what they would buy at the grocery store with things that they can raise themselves and then a lot of people are partnering with each other to be able to barter those things. So if I raise chickens and you raise cows, we get together and it helps both of us. Yeah, and homesteading really is kind of turning more into a spectrum. Um, previous generations, it was completely living off your land, pretty much off the grid, uh, homeschooling, doing your own medicine, doing your own food. Uh, providing all of your food and there are still plenty of people that you can look up and learn from that do that um, it's very inspirational it's very dedicated that is their full-time job um, and they are 100% self-sufficient so it is an amazing lifestyle um, it's very hard for other people that have other jobs or um, are a little more connected to modern things like after school activities and fast food and stuff like that so um, homesteading really has gone from just strictly off the grid to a little bit more um, modern day for sure and so there are lots of great families like arms family hidden heights like there's some great oklahoma families that are setting wonderful examples of what homesteading looks like in a modern world so hobby farming is kind of the uh, gateway into uh, this world. A lot of people have a small amount of land, a small amount of resources that they can dedicate, or even a small amount of time. Um, so people that start a garden, um, people that have maybe some chickens, that's an easy way to get in. Um, you're not necessarily shooting to become a large producer. You're not even necessarily looking to supplement a lot of your food, your income with what you're making. You're just experimenting. Um, that's where we started. We've been there for probably a couple of years now where we've had a garden, we've had some animals, we've tried different things, we've learned what works and doesn't work. But when it doesn't work, it's not a detriment to us. Um, you know, our garden failed completely a few years ago. No big deal. We were going to the grocery store anyways. So it's an easy way to get in and see which niche inside of the homesteading or, or hobby farm um, micro farming world you want to be in, whether it's animals or gardening or whatever it is. Um, the other thing that's huge for us is it's a way to teach your kids some responsibility. Our kids wake up every morning and they go feed our animals, they check on our animals, they learn that something is dependent on them and when something is dependent on you, you have a huge responsibility to those things. So the responsibility side for kids is huge in any of these worlds, but hobby farming is a great way to start. And then for us, for grownups, the, um, just the leisure, the, the activity of being outside and doing things outside is well worth um, the time you put into a hobby farm. Since the quarantine, we've kind of graduated from hobby farming into micro farming, um, and then also micro ranching because we, it involves livestock too. Uh, 
So the thing is, our family's not completely dependent on those things working. However, we are more a little, we are a little more invested time-wise and financially to making those things work. So it is going to be almost like a side business with our livestock because our goal is to raise and breed goats and sell those or ibex. Um, the farming element is we would like to expand gardens and produce more of our own food. So we'd like to do some orchard trees. We'd like to do more um, back to Eden gardening. Uh, we're gonna do a fall garden this year and then we'll roll it into a winter garden and then we'll be more prepared next spring. So since we have had extra time, we have rolled in from the hobby side of things to like the micro farming and ranching side of things. So that has been something that we have been wanting to do since we moved here five years ago. We just haven't had the time or the knowledge. So we've tried a lot of things, we've failed at a lot of things, and we are finally to a spot where we feel like it is worth putting a little bit more time and money into because we feel more confident with where we're at. Micro farms are also something that people can do on one acre. We have um, almost 17, but a lot of them are down in the woods and there's nothing we can do farming or raising livestock, it, it does flood. So we have less land around our house and that's what we're trying to make the most of that. But you can see lots of examples of like a one acre micro farm and a one acre, one acre micro ranch. So they're just ways to really, really get the most out of your land. Yeah, so in conclusion, um, do your homework, do your research, try to decide what your passions are. Um, you don't want to start something and put a lot of time and money into something that you're not going to follow through with. Um, that's not good for you. It's not good for your soul. It's not a good example for your kids. So watch videos like this. Um, see what other people are doing and then think, okay, what could I do? Start small, uh, start smart. Um, it's always best to start with quality products, quality equipment, um, and a good plan so that you can follow through whatever your goals are that you can achieve. With. So go ahead and follow us and send us any questions you might have about getting started because that's one way we've been able to grow and learn more is just by asking other people and kind of checking out their operation and what they're doing and applying some of those ideas to our own. Good luck.